I'm Melody. Welcome to Myanmar Today Review, and this is where we visit the top stories for this week from Myanmar Today. Here are the reports from our reporters from this week. Year 9 will be giving us a look into how the president urges all national brethren to safeguard the union against disintegration. Biet Thain got the latest report on the 2020 New Year Dama ceremony holds in Yangon. Aka Jo will give us the details on how Myanmar's finished gems and jewelry businesses urgently need to catch up with neighboring countries. Yan 9 once again has the full story on Yangon Zoological Gardens get almost 200 new animal birds within five years. Zueman has the full story on how city taxi registration enables Yangon region to help establish rule of law. Before we get to the report, let's take a look at the feature local news from this week. Eight joint implementation coordination meeting on the nationwide ceasefire agreement was held in Nipido on Wednesday. Chairperson of National Reconciliation and Peace Center, State Councillor Do Aung San Suu Kyi, gave an opening speech. The State Councillor said, despite having various opinions and thoughts, the ultimate goal is to build a democracy federal union based on national unity. She urged all to make continuous efforts for achieving the goal. State Councillor, Republic of the Union of Myanmar, Do Aung San Suu Kyi said, quote, In order to shape the future union, we all need to continue our efforts for achieving more perfect and inclusive federal principles. Moreover, concerning the implementation of NCA and peace process after 2020, it is important to lay down the work plans and priorities that can be accepted by all personnel. We all have already understood this fact and accepted it. Drafting a long-term plan will help strengthen our way forward, and it is very heartening to see everyone is cooperating for it." End quote. The Union Peace Conference 21st Century Penglong has been held for three times, and 51-point agreement has been reached as part of the Union Accord. Let's move on to the last local news for today. A three-day exhibition on rare documents began on Thursday at the National Library of Myanmar in Yangon. Organized by the Department of Historical Research and National Library under the Ministry of Religious Affairs and Culture, the exhibition was attended by the Director General and responsible officials from the department, teachers from the Ministry of Education, students, researchers, and enthusiasts. Variety of rare documents such as old treaties, Myanmar literature, Myanmar historical records, laws, history of ancient pagodas, inscriptions, ancient photos, Myanmar traditional costumes, and many others are being showcased at the exhibition. Not only local but also foreign visitors join the exhibition, which will run till the 11th of this month. And that's all with the local news. This is Myanmar Today Review, broadcasting from Myanmar International Radio. On FM, make sure you catch us on 96.1 FM in Yangon, 96.5 in Mandalay, and 96.7 in Nebido. You can also download MI Radio app on both iOS and Android devices for your own convenience. The flag hoisting ceremony of the 72nd anniversary of Independence Day, one of the most significant days of the Myanmar citizens, was held at Independence Monument in Mahabandula Park in Yango region at 4.20 a.m. on the 4th of January, during which the God of Honor flew the flag. Yangon Chief Minister U Pyomenthain of Yangon Region Government read out the message of the 72nd anniversary of Independence Day sent by President U Mint of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar. Myanmar is a country standing in the world with great dignity and its own sovereignty since time immemorial. When colonialism was fully functioned in the 19th century, Myanmar became a colony and lost its independence and its sovereignty. Year 9 reports. The flag hoisting ceremony of the 72nd anniversary of Independence Day one of the most significant days of Myanmar citizens was held at Independence Monument in Mahabadula Park in Yangon region at 4.20 a.m. on 4th January. 
during which the Guard of Honor flew the flag. Yangon Region Chief Minister Upyo Min Thain of Yangon Region Government read out the message of the 72nd anniversary of Independence Day sent by President U Wei Mian of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar. Upyo Min Thain, Yangon Region Chief Minister, read out the message. <laughs> To be able to stand as a sovereign nation in the region, as well as in the world with the positive image, all the national reasons must strive, with the strong union spirit, to preserve our three main national causes, the non-disintegration of the union and the non-disintegration of the national solidarity and perpetuation of sovereignty, while taking the lesson in the past to achieve mutual understanding, mutual trust, and mutual respect among our national races. Moreover, we must also strive for successful implementation of peace process, the emergence of a federal union, building complete mutual trust, and the amendment of the constitution, which is relevant to the real situation of the nation, and which is in line with the standard and the fundamental principle of democracy and human right through union separation. <laughs> Udin Luen, Yangon Region Ludo Representative representing Bazundang Constituency 2 said. Myanmar is an independent country standing for a long time in the world. It can stand on its own feet. To be stable, to stand on its own feet, our ancestors sacrificed had to run the risk of losing life, blood and sweat. Their hard work is always in our memories and it never loses in our mind. We envy those who had sacrificed their life for independence. For that reason, as an independent citizen, I will faithfully serve the duty assigned to me. I firmly believe that the independence days are held with these noble aims. <laughs> Myanmar is a country standing in the world with great dignity and its own sovereignty since time immemorial. When colonialism was fully functioned, the 19th century Myanmar became a colony and lost its independence and its sovereignty. The patriotic leaders of the national races and all the national races, led by our great national leader, Bujo Aung San, had sacrificed their lives with patriotic and national spirit to gain independence. As a result, Myanmar gained its independence and sovereignty on 4th January 1948. That's the report on how the president urges all national brethren to safeguard the union against disintegration.
Yangon Region Government has organized the New Year Dama Ceremony for 2020 at the People's Park in Yangon. This is the three-day ceremony starting from the 1st to the 3rd of January, and Seattle's deliver the sermons respectively on each day. New Year Dama Ceremony for 2020, organized by Yangon Region Government, has started at the People's Park in Yangon, crowding with Buddhist people in the city. Rector of Sidik World Buddhist University and Abhidhamma University, Dr. Badanat Nandamala Bivansa, preached a sermon on the second day of ceremony, 2nd January. Yangon Region Chief Minister Upyo Min Thein and his spouse and hundreds of thousands of people from many regional townships attended the ceremony. At the event, Dr. Badanat Nandamala Bivansa delivered a sermon titled to be thoughtful for the country. Hearing Buddha's sermon is an invaluable thing for Buddhist people, and the sermon preached by Seattle makes the congregation peaceful both for physically and mentally, and also make them walk to the right path set by the deputy speaker of Yangon Region Luto, U Lin Nai Mian. <laughs> We feel peaceful and tranquil. Buddha summon makes us feel peaceful and then it makes us to spread out this peacefulness to our family, to our companion and to surroundings. That's why hearing Buddha's summon is invaluable for all Buddhist people. Pomo Siaraji on the first day and Rector Siaraji on the second day delivered summons and these summons make the congregation peaceful both for physically and mentally and also make them walk to the right path. The event is about New Year Dhamma ceremony and at this time everyone will conduct their New Year plan to create more resolution which is better than last year with full of strength and they will prepare to wish for the new year and they will try to fix themselves to be better in present year. This three-day New Year Dhamma ceremony was organized by Yangon Region Government on the first day, Bamo Seattle, Dr. Badana Kumara Bivansa. On the second day, Rector of Siriku World Buddhist University and Abhidhamma University, Dr. Badana Nandamala Bivansa. And on the third and last day of the ceremony, Chancellor of Siriku International Buddhist Academy's Seattle, Dr. Shinyanisara, delivered the sermons respectively. Attendant Makai Le from Plaintaya Township said, We collected all the philanthropic groups and volunteer services to donate Dhamma books, Batan, as New Year Dhamma donation to the congregation. We also donated last year. This year is more systematic than last year. There is fingerprint system in the food donation shops, and so the donators can donate systematically. The congregation might be struggle because here it is too crowded, and it would be the best if they act with kindness. Apart from it, everything here is relevant. I suppose the donator should donate the things that are useful for congregation, and then we will receive the mida back from them. Attendant Wu Mian from Insane Township said, This year, the first time for me attending to the New Year Dhamma ceremony. Here, a rally crowded with people, and it is very delightful. And also, we feel really delightful in our mind hearing the sermon of Sayaro G. The healthcare services are also provided. I think it is really satisfying provision. At the ceremony, the well wishers donated food for the congregation and healthcare services, the information counters, and the donation space and especially for the public security were systematically arranged for the people coming from various townships for the ceremony. Yangon Region Government also arranged about 1,500 YBS ferries to respective regions and taxis for the convenience of the congregation. That's the report on the 2020 New Year Dhamma Ceremony holds in Yangon. And now we move on to the third report.
Myanmar is rich in natural resources, and it produces world-owned precious gems. Myanmar's finished gems and jewelry urgently need to catch up with neighboring countries. The government encourages the production and sales of processed gems. Akajo has more. Myanmar's finished gems and jewelry urgently need to catch up with the neighboring countries. Myanmar is rich in natural resources and precious stones. Gems emporiums are held more frequently to promote the gems and jewels market in the country. However, the exhibitions mostly showcase the unprocessed gems, and the sales of the processed gems and jewels need to improve. The government encourages exhibitions of processed gems such as rubies, sapphires, and jade, as well as locally made jewelry, to add value to the gemstones and create new markets for local entrepreneurs. However, Myanmar urgently needs to catch up with its neighboring countries in businesses of the processed gems and jewelries. Uti Hanta, spokesperson of Yangon International Gems and Jewelry Fair, said. The gems processing in other countries have improved. Thai, Vietnam, and China are good examples. Their tech is good. Myanmar needs to improve crafting to work in more income rather than selling the raw stones. The government banned stones mining to promote conservation, so the number of raw stones production dropped. Selling Polish Myanmar jewelry is new here, but the international exhibition showcases the product made from our raw stones. So we want to bring the potential and market back to Myanmar to promote sales of gems and jewels made and polished in Myanmar. Myanmar is rich in natural resources and it produces world-renowned precious gems like rubies, sapphires, jade, and other semi-precious gems like spinels, aquamarines, garnets, and peridots. Moreover, Myanmar's South Sea culture pearls are also popular among the wearers. Myanmar is famous for its abundant supply of various gems. Known around the world, the high-quality jades are found in Longkin, Park and Tracks, World-famous rubies are found in Mogo and Mangshu gem tracks, respectively. Sapphire and various colored gems are produced on a large scale in Mogo gems tract. Myanmar Gems Enterprise is taking supervision and allowing permit for local private entrepreneurs who wish to make joint venture production with the nation on mutual benefit allowing to produce in the tracks. Myanmar Gems Enterprise also organizes emporiums and special sales three times a year for the productive Jason Gems sale. Moreover, Myanmar Gems Enterprise also encourages gems and jewelry traders to allow permit so that the jeweler shops are being developed and the market takes place in Yangon. The Myanmar Gems Enterprise issued a directive banning jade mining and extraction in response to recent disasters. The statement points out recent collapses in landslides resulting in deaths and damages to machinery, local houses, and infrastructure. A decade of large-scale mining has left the region and its people utterly scarred. The government has finally taken action to prevent further environmental degradation and mining disasters. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Environmental Conservation have recommended discontinuing mining and take corrective physical policies, ethical regulatory frameworks, and new licenses have been implemented. Dom Yintanai, spokesperson of the Yangon International Gems and Jewelry Fair, said, the first seal bead auction was highly did at the second Yango International Gem Central Fair 2019, and it was the great opportunity for overseas buyers as well as the local buyers. They will build the second seal bead auction as well as the gems for rent at the third Yango International Gem Central Fair 2020 to promote and expand the gems industry of. Myanmar internationally. This is Agajo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. That's the report on how Myanmar's finished gems and jewelry businesses urgently need to catch up with neighboring countries. Yangon Zoological Gardens, one of the public recreational sites, is preserving almost 
1,500 animals, including rare species of animate beans, birds, and reptiles. There are also new animal birds while keeping the animals like that in Yangon Zoological Gardens. It was learned that almost 200 new animal birds were further reproduced within five years, from 2015 to 2019. The Yangon Zoological Gardens has an area of more than 57 acres, with a collection of 130 animal species and 220 members of staff. Feedstuff about 1,500 animals cost 1.1 million jets a day. Yenine reports. Yangon Zoological Garden, one of the public recreational sites, is preserving almost 1,500 animals, including rare species of animal, birds, and reptiles. There are also new animal birds. While keeping the animals like that in Yangon Zoological Garden, it was learned that almost 200 new animal birds were further reproduced within five years from 2015 to 2019. Dr. Tumian, doctor in charge of Yangon Zoological Garden, said. <laughs> Bengal tiger species is very rare and about four tigers were newly born within five years. The birth rate of Bengal tiger is non controlled because the durable space is narrow for keeping them. It is natural that if Bengal tiger increase in number, they will have to be released into the forest. Almost 10 star turtle, Myanmar own species, were newly born within five years. The birth were not less than 10. Sun baby turtle die in the young stage. About 100 golden deer that can be only seen in Myanmar when newly born within five years. A zebra of rare species was newly born in Yangon Zoological Garden on January 2nd. The baby zebra is being taken into care at the special intensive place. With the reproduction of the animal species in Yangon Zoological Garden, deaths of animals occurred there. Especially species of tiger, bear and camel died old. It was learned that deaths of rare animals in the old age species reach 20 within 5 years. The deaths of samba, deer and birds, as well as other species reached more than 30. The dead bodies of the animals are kept at the Museum of Natural History Museum and some have to be destroyed. The skins of the dead animals have to be gathered. Some dead animals have to be stuffed so that they look like living ones and can be displayed. Most of the wild animals living in Yangon Zoological Garden are not only local rare species but also foreign ones. The animals have to be preserved according to Myanmar's climate situation. The preservation of the animals must be in conformity with the natural features. In charge of fauna preservation of Yangon Zoological Garden said. <laughs> I've been preserving the animals for almost 30 years in Yangon Zoological Gardens. New animal species are coming and times are becoming diverse. We have to take care of the animals like our own children. Animal keepers have to take care of their real life. We have to create habitations suitable for their real life. The Yangon Zoological Garden has an area of more than 57 acres with a collection of 130 animal species and 220 members of staff. Feed staff of about 1,500 animals cost 1.1 million chats a day. Um Yoo Jodu, manager of administration department of Yangon Zoological Garden said. Animals have houses to live in. Their houses are fitted with iron bars. They live behind the iron bars. Peace of mind ensures longer life and of great importance. Human being or any animal or any living thing wants peaceful mind. The visitors could avoid frightening the animals and not cause annoyance to them. If not there, 
may be a little of difficulty. There are 3,000 to 5,000 foreigner arrivals to the zoo every month. The number of local people arrivals in December alone in 2019 was about 170,000. Yangon Zoological Gardens is home to a wide variety of rare species of wildlife, and it is a center of attention for the young people and old. Games for children, scenic views for photographing, and recreational sports for men are attracting the attention of the visitors. It offers a variety of sports such as sky rope, high jump, and mountaineering. Does the report on Yangon Zoological Gardens get almost 200 new animal birds within five years? City taxi service owners have placed emphasis on measures to register their taxis in Yangon region, thereby resulting in contributing much towards the establishment of rule of law, said Wu La Ang, who is the Joint Secretary of Yangon Region Transport Authority. Yangon City Development Committee previously took overall responsibility for a city taxi registration. In a time of all private bus lines control committee, formerly known as Matata, its branch offices at the district level handled the move. Now the YRTA has been assigned to perform a task of city taxi registration at a time when the new government comes into power. City taxi service owners have placed emphasis on measures to register their taxi in Yangon region, thereby resulting in contributing much towards the establishment of rule of law, said Ula Ang, Joint Secretary of Yangon Region Transport Authority. Yangon City Deployment Committee, YCDC, previously took overall responsibility for the city taxi registration. In the time of all private bus line control committee, formerly known as Matata, its branch office at the district level handled the move. Now, the YRDA has been assigned to perform a tax of city taxi registration at a time when the new government comes into power. Ula Ao, Joint Secretary of the Yangon Region Transport Authority, YRTA, said that. A total of 623 incidents occurred during 2017. We did for good of the public. Moreover, we have the organizations concerning rule of law and vehicles. There were 436 incidents in 2018 and 308 in 2019. That included a variety of incidents such as car accident, robbery, loss of personal belongings, and commuters' complaints. Having viewed these incidents, the YRTA is putting emphasis on the city taxi registration. According to the registration numbers of YRTA, we have begun checks in cooperation with the Department of Road Transport locally, known as Gangyana, since November in 2019. Repeated registrations had to be cancelled. Now Gangyana's registrations becomes completely clear after checks are run. It was learned that there are 65,615 taxi registered till the end of December. Plans are underway to supervise the city taxis with the use of technological advances. Unu Nimo, Managing Director of Yango Region Transport Authority, YLTA, said that. We are placing emphasis on buses. We have black box stages. It is of great importance in public transport. It can chase the buses. It is of boost analysis. The data we receive are to be analyzed. Only if we can do like this will we be able to know how to make back to in the future. We the YRDA is trying how to use technological advances and also discussing with international organizations in order to catch up with the international community. Gradually, many functions has been displaced by technology advances in the public transport system. Some emphasis is being placed on technology advances. 
that registration of city taxis can protect owners and drivers against unforeseeable dangers. It can also provide protections for the passengers. The YRTA is making concerted efforts to provide better conditions for the owners, the drivers and the passengers. Uto Menai, a taxi driver from Tanlian Township, told Emma Radio that The drivers need to win the trust of the passengers. It depends on the drivers. I consider like that. If we have good attitude toward the passengers, they will have the same mind. I don't know about others. I have regular orders. I accept a bargain price if the first comer hires my taxi in the morning. I have to consider convenience both for the owner and me. It is almost as usual when we renew our city taxi license. Kanyana has made all city taxi register Yango licenses. The taxis without Yango licenses are running in Yango. There are many taxis with Pago, Aori, and Kayan licenses running in Yango. This causes traffic congestion in Yango. The registration of city taxi is a good measure. I don't yet know what guarantees are coming. That's all with the news and reports on Myanmar Today Review. Tune in every Saturday on MITV at 8.30pm for Myanmar Today Review. Until next time.